Come on back to the year 1995, where the internet came in cereal boxes and I didn't have to pay rent to live in my parents' basement. It's also the year Mortal Kombat was released, spending three weeks at the top of the box office and making over $122 million. Fast forward 26 years later and Warner Brothers hopes to reboot this struggling franchise after the disaster that was Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Toasty! You're alive. Too bad you will die. So in this video I thought it would be fun to compare the original 1995 Mortal Kombat to the 2021 version. What's different, what's the same, and why didn't Goro get punched in the dick? That's got to hurt. I don't care where you're from. So make sure to like and subscribe because here we go. Right off the bat, we have our first difference, the Warner Brothers logo. You won't see this on the 95 version as it was distributed by New Line, whereas New Line only acted as the production company for the 2021 release. Remember that bop and techno mix from the original? Well, it doesn't quite fit the tone of 2021's beginning and only really makes an appearance near the end of the film. And that's because the intro here is of Tranquil 1617 Japan. The original doesn't have any flashbacks at all. It does, however, have nightmares, which both versions incorporate. And while both these versions help set up the Mortal Kombat tournament, they go about it in two wildly different ways. In 95, our protagonist is Liu Kang, who joins the tournament to avenge the death of his brother Chan at the hands of Shang Soon. Fun fact, the actor who plays Chan was also the stunt coordinator on The Bachelor. Cat. Kylie. Fatality. The 2021 version sets up our new protagonist Cole Young's bloodline and how he's connected to the great warrior Hanzo Hasashi who will become one of Mortal Kombat's most famous fighters, Scorpion. A huge difference between these versions are how they treat Scorpion and Sub-Zero. In the original these fighters are completely one-dimensional and basically are just there to look cool and say their catchphrases. Get over here! In fact, I don't think Sub-Zero says anything at all, whereas the 2021 version has them completely fleshed out with backstories that mesh into the greater plot. You may notice Hanzo here carrying these buckets of water, which are the same type of buckets Liu Kang uses to defeat Sub-Zero in the original. We also get our first close-up of Scorpion's iconic spear tip. In the original, it has more of an organic quality, while here it's made of steel and more faithful to the game. We also see that it's Johnny Cage fighting Scorpion here. Here. And Johnny's absence from the 2021 version is one of the biggest differences between the two films. However, we do find out Cole is on his way to Hollywood in search of Johnny at the end. In the original, we see Johnny on set with a director who looks suspiciously like Steven Spielberg. Hey, he might even be on the set of Citizen Cage, which we see a poster of near the end, a play on words of Citizen Kane, the 1941 classic. Notice how we don't see his face here, likely because they haven't cast him yet. Raiden's role in the 2021 version is is way more hands-off than it is in the original. It's also taken a lot more seriously. The fate of billions will depend upon you. <laughs> Raiden is the protector of Earthrealm, and he feels a lot more human in the original as opposed to the constantly glowing eyes of the 2021 version. His powers are also vastly expanded, but that has likely more to do with the advancement in visual effects more than anything else. We see this with other characters as well, like Liu Kang's Fireball and Dragon Apparition or Sub-Zero's Ice Wall. The closest we get to Liu Kang having supernatural powers in the original is the final blast he gives to Shang Tsung. Characters like Sonya never even get powers in the original unless you count her death by vagina move. The 2021 version gets a lot of the exposition out of the way by showing this title card, explaining how Shang Tsung is one Mortal Kombat victory away from being able to take over Earthrealm. In the original, this is all done through dialogue from Raiden. The main difference here, however, is this talk about bloodlines and prophecy, which are entirely new. The 95 version dabbles a bit with Liu Kang and Destiny, but there's no mention of a prophecy. And Outworld during the daytime, something you don't see in the original. Although both versions do visit this 
Realm, the new version shows what appears to be Shang Tsung's throne. In the original, the fighters battle him in his castle, which isn't depicted in the 2021 version. We do, however, get these cloaked citizens of Outworld, just like the original, and a giant stone statue of Prince Goro. Some of you may forget, but Jax is actually in the original for a total of 10 seconds. Literally, I, I counted. Trust me, Sonya. I trust one person on this planet, Jax. You're talking to him. Here, his character is way more fleshed out, having become a champion himself after tracking down a target with his partner Sonya Blade in Brazil and obtaining his Dragon Mark. His shotgun is also way more beefed up. Unlike the original, these Dragon Marks play a large role in the new version. They designate who will become a champion and who can unlock something known as Arcana. This concept was never discussed or shown in the original, but it's what locks one's powers and is different for each individual. Shang Tsung tasks Sub-Zero with tracking down and killing Earth's champions, the ones with this mark. Unlike the original, Shang Tsung doesn't invite them to participate in a battle on his secluded island. He decides to break the rules established by the Elder Gods. Not mentioned in the 2021 version is his allegiance to Shao Kahn, the Emperor. We do see a statue of him. At the end of the 95 version, he makes a brief appearance, setting him up as the main villain for Mortal Kombat Annihilation. But, oh god, we, we won't get into that. Not have seen everything. While the original takes us to exotic locations like Southeast Asia, the new version introduces us to the beauty of Gary, Indiana. Sonya here acts as Mrs. Exposition, teaching us more about the tournament and how the dragon marks work. We even get a glimpse of what could be the character Nighthawk, not featured in either versions. However, there is one line of dialogue in the original that does mention him. You're going to need to see Nighthawk. Shang Tsung tasks Melina with sending out Sizoth, also known as Reptile. He looks a lot better here than he does in the original. Melina isn't in the original. She's a genetic experiment created by Shang Tsung and an adopted daughter of the Emperor Shao Kahn that makes her stepsisters with Princess Katana, who we do see in the original. We might not see her in the 2020 version, but we definitely do see Katana's iconic steel fans in the background of Raiden's temple. Cole finds out that Sonya has Kano chained up. In the original, she chases him to Shang Tsung's island. Jax and Sonya work together as part of the Special Forces, an organization created by the US government to bring down the Black Dragon and Red Dragon clans. Kano is the leader of the Black Dragons, which deal in illegal arms trades, among other things. When we first meet him in the original, he already has his iconic red eye, the one with silver plating, while in this version, he learns this ability as part of his arcana. Although he does have a red eye in the original, we never see him use it there. Kano ends up joining forces with Cole and Sonya for a short time, and even uses his trademark heart ripout fatality, which originated from the video game, something we don't see in the original. In fact, the word fatality, which has become synonymous with the game, only is spoken once in both movies. Once when Shang Tsung sucks the soul out of a guy who loses to Liu Kang, and once when Kung Lao brutally severs Natara in half, which I can't even show, or else my video will get demonetized. Upon arriving at Raiden's temple, we're introduced to Kung Lao. In the original, this name is only mentioned once, Kung Lao being an ancient ancestor of Liu Kang's. This Kung Lao is named after the same ancestor, and it's hinted at that Liu Kang and Kung Lao could be cousins. A fun addition to the 2021 version is when Liu Kang challenges the champions to test their might, a minigame found in the original video game, but never mentioned in the original film. Speaking of Liu Kang, we learn more about his background in the 2021 version, like how he was an orphan picked up by Raiden. This isn't really delved too deeply in the original, and more focus is placed on his relationship with his brother Chan, something not mentioned in the new version. Shang Tsun tasks some more memorable MK characters with defeating the champions. These characters aren't seen in the original and include Natara, Cabal, and General Raiko. Most notable among them is Cabal, who has history with Kano, also being a member of the Black Dragon Clan. It was Kano who healed Cabal and gave him his respiratory mask, which he calls an iron lung in the new version. Kano ends up double-crossing the champions by destroying Raiden's staff, which seems to be protecting the temple. This staff is never seen in the original. Meanwhile, while Cole goes back home, he's attacked by Goro. In the original, Goro was a $1 million animatronic suit requiring over a dozen puppeteers to operate. There are full scenes with him having dialogue as well. In the new version, he's basically in one scene to fight Cole with the purpose of Cole discovering his arcana. He's a bit more green in tone and completely CGI. Cole ends up killing Goro with his newfound power, while in the original he's killed by Johnny Cage after falling off a cliff. But I want to hear which Goro version you guys like more in the comments below. Kung Lao says the iconic flawless victory line here, while in the original that line is only spoken
given by Shang Tsung. Sonya ends up killing Kano, stabbing him through the eye with a garden gnome, and I wonder if he'll be resurrected in future sequels with that new iron eye plate. Liu Kang's fight with Cabal has him using his trademark bicycle kick move, while this same move is performed by him against Reptile in the original. Cole is tasked with taking on Sub-Zero, but is helped by his ancestor Scorpion who has emerged from the depths of hell. In the original, Scorpion transports Johnny Cage to a hell-type location where they fight. He even uses his Skullfire breath move, which we see in action in both versions. With Sub-Zero defeated, Scorpion says he is now free, and Shang Tsung is set up to be a recurring villain, swearing he'll bring armies next time they see each other. In the original, Shang Tsung dies at the end, with the franchise opting to focus on Shao Kahn in the sequel. Warner Brothers is currently waiting to see whether or not this reboot is a success, and the actor who played Sub-Zero has already signed on for four more Mortal Kombat movies, should the studio decide to continue with the franchise. So it looks like if the movie does well, Sub-Zero won't be the only thing that survives. Thanks for watching everyone, check out my Mortal Kombat Ending Explained video for an even deeper analysis of the story, and make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. For more bad takes, you can always follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.